Okay, hello everybody, and welcome to Resin Tech Gaming. My name is Chris. This is going to be a very short tutorial, hopefully. Um, it is about screen calibration, so this could get a little bit complicated. Um, but basically, I'm going to talk you through the key ways that you can calibrate your screen and make it looking nice and crisp and perfect for color grading without too much hassle. So the first way that you can calibrate your screen is by using the Windows baked in calibration tool. Um, this is very basic and very rudimentary, but it does assist you in getting the basic color levels, the basic contrast and things right. The only thing that you may not like about this is that you are going to have to eyeball it and make adjustments based on your guesses. Also, before you try this, you have to make sure that your screen is set to 2.2 gamma so as to have an even base to start from. And you also have to make sure that your screen is not emitting, especially on the color tests, an orange light. So most screens have a built-in color rest, so to speak. Um, they display orange and yellow as a way to offset the blue light that the screen will produce and therefore reduce strain on the eyes. The problem with this is that it actually ends up messing your color balance and ends up messing the color values that you see. You want a true white, you don't want an off white. So I highly recommend um, turn, making sure on your screen settings that if you have a warm tone, setting that to neutral, or if it's all possible, setting it to cool, since we'll be adjusting this anyways. So the second way is going into a website that I'll leave in a link in the description um, that will basically allow you to customize completely your setup using the NVIDIA control panel. Um, what you are going to do is go to this website, look at the different values that they give you, and then based on which image you're presented, such as contrast, work yourself around it and kind of eyeball what colors you would like um, and or need and eyeball what contrast, gamma, brightness and everything that you need to really kind of fine tune and get things looking perfect. Um, as I said, the link will be in the description so you can go check that out for yourself. And the last and final way is to use a calibration tool. Now sadly, I don't have any calibration tools, but there's plenty of videos of people online using them. The basic process seems to be attach a little uh, box onto your screen and then run a software and as the software goes through presenting colors and presenting images to the little screen it will adjust the brightness the luminance and the color um, variety and settings to correctly get the colors that you desire this is just the basic process i don't have it so i can't show you sadly um, but this is the easiest and the most optimal way the only downside is of course this costs money and it costs a significant chunk of change if you're looking for something that is color accurate. Okay, so to get started, the first thing that we should do is go to the bottom left of the screen and click on the search bar, and then you should type in Calibrate. It should be the first option that pops up for you. So you tap Enter, and it'll load up this screen. This is just the basic calibration. Uh, this is a nice, quick and dirty way of getting things looking good without having to worry about things too much. So you hit Next to continue and then next to continue again. You can read these pieces of text to assist yourself and make life a little bit easier. Um, but the general process is that if your gamma is too low, you'll see white dots. If it's too bright, you'll see red dots. Uh, you hit next and you adjust until you see neither. You're trying to get this kind of middle sweet spot. You'll see if I go uh, too high, the gray dots start appearing. If I go too low, white dots start appearing in the middle. So you want to kind of find that middle ground where you get neither and hit next and that is the appropriate amount of gamma that you need um, nice and easy go to the next step this is just adjusting contrast they have three examples of contrast if your contrast is oh sorry brightness if your brightness is too high everything will appear gray that's supposed to be black if it's too dark then everything will appear true black and you won't see any detail ideally you want somewhere in between where you can distinguish this little x in the background and you can tell the shirt from the background so if we hit next and of course, I've already gone through this, so for the most part, this is fine. This is something that you'll have to adjust either on your TV uh, slash monitor, or it's something that you'll have to adjust on your settings in the NVIDIA control panel or your AMD control panel. If you minimize this and right click, you can actually access the control panel right here, nice and easy for if you need it. The section that we are specifically looking for is adjust desktop and color settings and then under here we can click use nvidia settings and we can adjust these manually ourselves so we can adjust the brightness the contrast and the gamma but this is fine for me um, i'm using the other applications control of color settings because i'm using the windows built-in system as opposed to adjusting with this and then we hit 
apply if you'd like to. Uh, I'm going to cancel out because I don't want any changes. We we'll go back to the test. So basically you want to be able to see the difference between the black shirt, the black blazer, the black background, and the black X, which is over here. Then hit next. Again, same thing with the white shirt. We want to have a, we don't want it to look faded. We want to have good contrast so it doesn't look faded. We want to be able to tell details in the white shirt and for it not to look overblown and washed out like that last image. So if we look at this, we can see all the crinkles of the shirt. This is a little overblown. Um, so I could readjust this to lower to make this less vibrant. But for the most part, this is perfectly fine for me. As I said, I've already gone through and done this. So these settings won't change very much for me. Uh, if they change a lot for you, feel free to just mess about with the sliders and fiddle about with it. Again, you'd probably want to use your NVIDIA control panel or adjust with your TV. So this next section is basically adjusting the greys so that they actually look grey. You've got a couple examples here where these all look a little too red, a little too green, a little too blue. And you want to avoid that. You want to have just a neutral, boring grey. So we go to this section and as I said, you just adjust. So I think that this actually looks ever so slightly um, green to me in this middle bit so I'm going to lower that and now it's looking a little too pinky so I'm going to lower lower the reds uh, this middle one here is looking blue for me so I'm actually going to reduce that although I don't want to do it too much because it'll offset the others and that green is still a little bit strong that red's coming on a bit strong and uh, what I sometimes do to get like the right adjustment so this is like a perfectly neutral gray for me um, what I sometimes do to adjust it is to look at the whites as well. You'll see that changing on the screen. And so if you think that it's a little too warm, if you think it's a little too cold, then you can readjust that and make sure that it's the right color for you. But that looks about right for me, so I'm going to hit next. So we can look at our current calibration versus our previous calibration. And this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like afterwards, before and afterwards. I'm not sure if this will show up on camera, but it's worth a try. Um, and then we can hit finish and if you want to you can activate clear type tuner clear type tuner will adjust your uh, the way that words are presented and letters are presented to you so for example I prefer more bold uh, text if you prefer smaller or thinner text then you can select and adjust that but that's pretty much it for this so I'm gonna cancel out and then the next step is to go through and use the website for further adjustments. So this is the website that we're going to be using to adjust our colors and our color variants. And um, what I highly recommend doing is opening up the desktop colors with NVIDIA control panel or your AMD equivalent, and then going through each of these individual pages. There's a plethora of information here so that you shouldn't be stuck. Um, it's a case of just going through and individually making sure that everything makes sense. So the cutoff point is over here. And for this section, you just want to make sure that you have each individual bar showing, which I actually do. So I'm fine on this front. I don't need to adjust my contrast any further. If you do, however, don't fret about it too much. Just go into the NVIDIA control settings, use the NVIDIA settings and adjust the contrast there. Then go to the display settings. And this is just changing the way that the colors are perceived. If your color settings aren't perceived correctly, then there will be issues. Um, lock and phase these should not be misaligned there should be like individual dots like uh individual pixels left and right of each other if there aren't then there's a problem with the way that your screen is calibrating the display you'll see any of these various effects over here um and the left is what it should look like which it does so we're golden um sharpness same again um, we're just going through and making sure that things aren't fuzzy, basically. And as I said, this website is just very helpful for figuring out finer details of calibration. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Generally speaking, you will make things correct as you go through. So this last one was gamma correction. This is just making sure things are bright enough. Um, the black level is being able to tell this black between these. Um, the white saturation is basically making sure that the contrast is not so high that you're unable to tell details from the last white. It should be a different offset white from this background white. Gradient should be a smooth gradient. There shouldn't be any chunks or any lines in between, um, or at the very least as few as you can get. I do have a bit of chunkage going on, but that's as best as I can do. Inversion pixel. I cannot remember what this one was for. Um, Oh, yeah, this is checking to see if there's any flickering. 
there shouldn't be any flickering on your screen. If there's any issue with flickering in any of these images, then it implies that there's an issue with the power draw from your computer and that's not necessarily something that you can sort out anyway, which is why I forgot about it because if you can't fix it, there's no point worrying about it. Response time, uh, these images will flick and appear and if you can't tell, your response time is good, basically. Uh, if it's a little slow and you can actually see a black square appearing, then you've got problems with your response time and your monitor is maybe not as fast as you'd like and will potentially have some input lag. Viewing angles. This is um, trying to figure out the best viewing angle for your screen. On top, there should be a green, uh, lime green text and underneath there should be red. And so it should say lagom and you should be able to see completely blank in the middle, which I can, so I'm at the perfect viewing angle. This is just to make sure that the color warping that would typically happen with other IPS panels uh, does not occur whilst you're using this. And this is just some more information about the contrast ratio, subpixel layout, and extra various information. And that is basically color calibration as best as you can with eyeballing it. It's really, it's really quite simple and it's down to your personal preference. And I say personal preference, because it's up to your own interpretation it's not something that anybody can really help you with unless you get a color calibrator and color calibrators are rather expensive so i typically stay away from them there are some cheaper options and they are fast and they are easy to use but i just don't want to spend money on that personally and if you don't either and you want a nice quick and free way to calibrate your screen this is definitely a way to do it so thank you for watching i'll catch you guys next time peace and take care and i'll see you guys in the next one